for an incredibly jam-packed 2023, it seems like the Five Nights at Freddy series is finally starting to slow down for a bit. <laughs> With the release of Help Wanted 2, it feels like we've reached a natural end point for this era of FNAF, the Steel Wool era, starting with the original Help Wanted back in 2019, spanning through Security Breach to today. We'll call it Phase 2 of FNAF. And just like the MCU, Phase 2 has been all about evil AI. And also just like the MCU's Phase 2, it really wasn't all about AI until the very end when they were like, no, guys, you don't get it. Clearly, we've been planning this this whole time and we didn't just decide at the very last minute to try and shoehorn everything into this weird AI explanation to try and make it all make sense. Actually, you know what? I guess the MCU didn't really do that last part, did they? But yes, it seems all the mysteries we've been trying to crack for the past five years have finally been answered in a short story and a free DLC that spell things out pretty clearly. The true villain of FNAF's Phase 2 has been the Mimic, a rogue AI with enigmatic intentions and a particular affinity for our old pal William Afton. But you know me, I can't just let these games name drop some obscure piece of tech as a hand wavy explanation without diving deep into the real world science to figure out exactly how it actually works. And maybe, if we're lucky, find some answers about this series biggest unanswered questions along the way. And today, I'm going to be doing exactly that. This is Five Nights at Freddy's Mimic AI Explain. Richard, hit that intro. A huge thanks to Sir Hammy for suggesting this video topic on Patreon. The Mimic as a character has appeared in both the games and the Tales from the Pizzaplex book series, and it works a little differently in both universes. In the books, the Mimic was created by a single father named Edwin as basically a nanny to look after his son David. It was programmed to copy his son's behaviors to act as a friend to him. At first, it would basically just parrot back whatever David said, but it eventually learned to actually respond like a real person. However, when David died in a car accident, Edwin took his anger out on the Mimic and just beat the crap out of it. The problem is, the Mimic can only do one thing, and that's copy the behavior of the people around it. And so it becomes super violent and starts murdering people. It's pretty bad. Eventually, Fazbear gets its hand on this tech and makes their own Mimic to do manual labor for them. And being the completely incompetent entity that they are when it comes to new technology, they somehow make the robot that murders people for fun even worse. They want it to salvage electronics and parts from old animatronics, so they tell it to search for humanoid objects and pull off the arms, legs, and heads. But the Mimic is like, all right, well that dude over there looks pretty humanoid to me, and then it goes and starts dismembering people. Just another example of how if Literally any person from Fazbear put a single thought into any decision they ever made, this whole story could have been avoided. In the games, the Mimic first appears in Security Breach Ruin, where it copies the voice of Gregory from the main game to lure a girl named Cassie down into the Pizzaplex to free it from the basement. Well, I say this is the first time we see the Mimic, but going back to previous games in Phase 2 with the knowledge that the Mimic is out there, an argument could be made that it's been showing up a lot. The Weeping Angels robots from Security Breach seem to be Mimics trained to play Red Light Green Light. It's possible that Burn Trap was a Mimic of some form, as well as Glitch Trap from the first Help Wanted, the one that took over the mind of Vanessa and turned her into Vanny. It's possible that all these things and more are mimics too, but we'll come back to them later once we know how real AI works to see if they fit the bill. Across both mediums, the mimic does 
well, exactly what's in the name. It mimics people. But in the game specifically, it does have one more strange capability. In every single game where the mimic shows up, it displays the ability to take over people's minds. In Help Wanted and Security Breach, it takes over Vanessa to turn her into Vanny. In one of Ruin's endings, it appears to take over Cassie to stop her from escaping. And the main ending of Help Wanted 2 has your character's mind put into the mask bot. This isn't mimicry, this is straight up assimilation. So, in the games, it's clear that the Mimic has two distinct capabilities. It can copy the voices and behaviors of a person, and it can take over your brain. So, how can we use real-world AI to explain all these things? Well, I'm glad you asked. For starters, calling the Mimic an AI program is technically correct, but not actually the full story. AI, or artificial intelligence, is literally anything where a computer tries to do something that a human would do. So all the stuff that you hear in the news about like ChatGPT and AI art are technically AI, but so is your opponent in Pong. What things like ChatGPT, AI voices, and the Mimic do is a much more complex subset of AI called machine learning. When you're writing a normal, non-AI-powered computer program, you need to be incredibly specific with every step of your instructions. As an example, if you were trying to write a program to tell a computer how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you would first need to tell it where to find the bag of bread, how to open the bag of bread, how many slices of bread to remove, where to put that bread, where to find the peanut butter, and so on and so on. If you miss even one step, if your grammar isn't perfect, if you forgot to account for a very specific edge case, the whole program's gonna crash. A machine learning algorithm, on the other hand, is a program that can effectively learn how to do something on its own. After setting it all up, you could just give it the ingredients, show it what the final product is supposed to look like, and given enough time, it would figure out how to make the PBJ. This is the type of AI program that people are talking about today. It's a field that's technically been around since the 1950s, but in the past five to 10 years, it's really taken center stage. Things like ChatGPT use it, but it can do way more than just what the news reports on. The dreaded YouTube algorithm that people are always complaining about, yep, that's machine learning. The face ID on your phone is machine learning. The machines they use to determine whether or not that weird lump on a scan is cancerous or not, that's machine learning. It's truly everywhere, and despite what fear-mongering news outlets and sci-fi movies would lead you to believe, that's not actually a bad thing. Machine learning isn't inherently bad or good or dangerous, it's just a tool for us to use. There are three main types of machine learning algorithms. Supervised algorithms are given a set of labeled data. For example, a bunch of pictures of dogs labeled as dog, and a bunch of pictures of not dogs labeled as no dogs. The program's job is to search for patterns among the pictures of dogs. And when it's done training itself, you should be able to show it a picture and it will tell you whether or not it has a dog in it. An unsupervised algorithm works similarly, except you don't tell it which pictures in the initial dataset are dogs and which ones aren't. The algorithm just has to figure it out for itself. These types of programs are good for finding subtle patterns in datasets that humans might have overlooked. This is how something like ChatGPT works. It doesn't actually understand the things that it's saying like you and I would, it's just been trained to search for patterns in words and sentence structure, and it's just picking the next most logical word in the sentence based on everything that's come before. That's why, if you've noticed, the longer a conversation with ChatGPT goes, the stranger it gets, because it continually just compounds on any small mistakes that it's made earlier. The final type of program is called a reinforcement algorithm. This one works based on trial and error. 
Going back to our dog example, you would just show it one picture and the program would have to guess if it's a dog or not. If it's right, you tell it, hey, good job, and then you move on. As you show it more and more pictures, it will slowly learn the patterns to be able to determine which pictures contain dogs and which ones don't. If you want it to be more accurate, you can simply continue to feed it more pictures. If you've ever seen a video where someone trains an AI to play Mario or something, this is the type of program they're using. Going back to Five Nights at Freddy's, the Mimic probably should have been a reinforcement algorithm, so that way when it tries to, oh, I don't know, pull your arms off, you can tell it to stop. But instead, it seems to be a straight, unsupervised algorithm. Not a great plan. As a machine learning algorithm continues to learn, it will create a neural network of patterns, a bunch of interconnected nodes that it can use to make decisions, much like a brain. Going back to the dog example, one node in this network might look for a specific nose, another the ear shape, another to see if it's quadruped. The more nodes that the algorithm has, the more accurate and flexible it will be. A program with a ton of different nodes layered on top of each other is called a deep learning model. This is the fancy stuff like self-driving cars, ChatGPT, or robots that can replicate serial killers. The mimic from the games is clearly an example of a deep learning algorithm. It's incredibly sophisticated, it has goals, it can listen and respond to Cassie in real time. It's a fully realized artificial intelligence. The one from the books? And not so much. If a thing's got arms and legs, that's all the information it has to go on, must be an endoskeleton. This goes to show that the mimic from the games specifically has probably been around for a long time, continually absorbing new information and adding new nodes to its neural network compared to the much newer book mimic. All right, so that's all well and good. But how does it help us understand the lore? And what about the mind control thing? What's that about? Well, don't worry, don't worry my friends, I'll get to that. But based on all of this, it's clear that the Mimic is a machine learning algorithm that can be trained off of the behavioral data of a specific person. It's not a physical robot, it's a program one where multiple instances could be trained off of different people to result in different mimics. And it's pretty clear that the one program we keep encountering in the games was trained off of none other than William Afton. So that begs the question, who made it? And why would they train it on the behavioral data of a crazy serial killer? Could it perhaps have been William himself who made the mimic in the games? Well. It's possible, but most people believe that Edwin from the books is supposed to be a parallel for Henry, William's business partner who designed a lot of the animatronics. Both men are brilliant inventors ahead of their time who lost a child at a young age. We even know that Henry has some experience with machine learning programs. The security puppet that's been trained to recognize and protect kids with specific colored armbands, guess what? That's machine learning. So it's not inconceivable that a brilliant but grief-stricken Henry would create an AI program to replace his daughter after she died. Heck, that's exactly what Henry does in the Silver Eyes novel trilogy. The big reveal of those books is that the main character is actually a robot trained to believe that she is the real, now deceased daughter of Henry. She's never explicitly called a mimic, but yeah, that's the exact same type of program. But remember, in the games, Henry isn't the only character to lose a child. Basically, the whole inciting incidents of this series is William's son dying in a freak accident with one of the animatronics, and William's promise to put him back together. All the murders he does are to gain a better understanding of Remnant, the magic metal with the souls of deceased trapped inside that William thought he could use to bring his son back. We know he's been experimenting with humanoid robots. It's not hard to imagine him learning of Henry's incredible AI program that he used to bring his daughter back 
and stealing one for his own use. So it's very possible that at some point, William stole a copy of the Mimic program to try and bring his son back, but since he wasn't the one to make it himself, he would have no idea how it works. But he could, as a sort of test run, try training it off of himself, his own behavior, his history of disguising himself as someone's friend to lure kids into the back where he would kill them, which is exactly what the Mimic does time and time again. If this were true, then it means that the Mimic's goals are, more or less, the exact same as Willie Mafton's, just without the context of why he's doing it. Trick, murder, put back together. All of that perfectly lines up with the main Mimic that we see in the games, but what about all those other potential Mimics that I talked about? Well, for starters, Glitch Trap is a dead ringer for an AI program. For starters, it's a program that's copying the exact actions of one William Afton, disguising himself as a friendly yellow rabbit to lure someone into the back of the pizzeria to sort of kill you. It has the ability to take over people's minds, which again, is really weird and not really something that William did, but it's important to note that this isn't an inherent ability in the program, it's something that it had to learn. When it tries to do this to your coworker Jeremy, he ends up going crazy, but by the time Vanessa comes around, it has trained itself to do it effectively. This is exactly what a machine learning program does. Now, why exactly it would want the ability to take over someone's mind? Well, that's a question for later. So Glitch Trap is almost certainly a mimic program, if not the very same one from the basement, but who else could be a mimic? Well, for starters, there's a long-standing theory about security breach that has basically been confirmed by the Tales of Pizzaplex that the character Gregory is secretly a robot, kind of like Charlie from the book series. And as we've already discussed, in order to have a robot that can think and interact with the world in such a convincingly human way, literally the only way to accomplish that is through a machine learning program just like the Mimic. Folks like the game theorists have speculated that Gregory is actually a robotic recreation of the crying child. I won't go into all the evidence today, but if that were true, then it would further support the idea that William used the Mimic program to try and recreate his son and just used himself as a test case. But with this knowledge that any robot exhibiting human-like behavior by definition basically has to be a Mimic or at least a similar technology, then who else? Those creepy animatronics from the basement of Security Breach are almost certainly mimics in training, but this can even explain the glam rock animatronics. That's right, Freddy, Chica, Roxy, and Montgomery Gator are probably all mimics too. These animatronics are so lifelike, they're very intelligent. They can have conversations, they have their own personalities. It almost seems like they're real people. And in order to get a robot to act like this, yeah, they have to be using machine learning. There's no other way to accomplish that. They too are, in a sense, mimics, trained off the behavioral data of real people. Perhaps past Fazbear employees, perhaps, oh, I don't know, the data of some old nighttime security guard? Glamrock Freddy and Gregory had a weirdly close relationship throughout Security Breach. A lot of people have drawn connections between them and Michael and the Crying Child, Willie Mafton's two sons. And whether or not you believe that Gregory is secretly a mimic-powered robot made by William as a way to literally put his son back together, it's very clear that he is at least meant to thematically parallel the Crying Child. And if Glamrock Freddy were trained, at least in part, off the behavior and experiences of Michael, it would explain Freddy's protective instincts. In life, Michael and his younger brother did not have a good relationship. But isn't the whole point of machine learning algorithms is that they learn from their mistakes to be better? We know from the books that the original Mimic was likely an unsupervised algorithm that just keeps doing its thing, and it ended pretty disastrously. 
So if you were looking to make a more sophisticated version 2 of this, you would probably make it a reinforcement algorithm, one capable of receiving feedback and adjusting its behavior accordingly. It's probably this type of program that you would use to try and rebuild your son. This even thematically parallels the characters that the AI are trying to replicate. The mimic replicating William Afton is an unsupervised algorithm that has one goal and will keep pursuing that goal unrelenting regardless of the consequences or whether or not they're right or wrong. It was William's shoddy tech that killed his son in the first place. If he had taken the proper safety precautions with the springlock suits like I've ragged on him for time and time again on this channel, his son would have been just fine even if he did stick his head in the suit. But he's not able to accept this. He keeps developing more and more advanced tech, more and more dangerous animatronics until he gets what he wants, regardless of how many people get hurt. Like the mimic, he is incapable of learning from his mistakes. But his sons are different. Michael is much more similar to a reinforcement algorithm. He treated his younger brother badly as a kid, he was a bully, and something really bad happened as a result. So he learns from that mistake and completely changes his behavior to be better just like the reinforcement algorithm that would be used in Gregory and Glamrock Freddy. The way I see it, the story these games are trying to tell is this. When William Afton's son dies, William promises to put him back together, whatever it takes. He goes on a murderous rampage to study Remnant, hoping he might be able to put his son's soul into a new body to effectively bring him back but it doesn't work quite the way he'd hoped. So instead, he turns his focus to AI. If he can't physically put his son's original soul into a new body, he can at least recreate him. He gets his hands on a program called The Mimic. Maybe he stole it from Henry, maybe he made it himself, it largely doesn't matter. To make sure this program can actually do what he thinks, he first tries training it on his own behavior and it totally works. Satisfied with his experiment, he leaves this newly trained code on some circuit boards in his office, never given physical form, and goes on to train a new program on his deceased son. At some point though, William dies. Like three different times, sort of, it's confusing. And after his death, Fazbear Entertainment finds the circuit boards with this highly advanced machine learning algorithm on it. They decide to put it to their own use and make more advanced animatronics. It doesn't go as smooth as they might have hoped, they have to cover up some deaths and bury some stuff in the basement, but eventually they're successful. They create the Glamrock animatronics, improved reinforcement algorithms trained off the behavioral data of real people. William's original dream with the Springlock suits, a character that can perform on stage and then walk off and interact with the kids, complete and utter immersion, has finally been realized. All thanks to one simple program. The Mimic. But I hear ya, yeah yeah, every single person's a Mimic now, cool cool whatever. But what about the mind control? What's up with that? Literally every single game where the Mimic appears, it's taken over someone's brain. What gives? Well, I think I do have an explanation for that too, but it will unfortunately have to wait until next week. That's right, my initiation is complete and I'm officially ascending to the next tier of FNAF theorydom. I'm making my first two-part theory. I really wanted to find a way to cram it all into one, but there's a lot left to unpack, and I don't have time to edit a whole 45 minute video this week. So hit that subscribe button to be notified when part two comes out, and tune in next week to unpack the truth behind robot mind control, William's fluctuating interest between Remnant and AI, how the enigmatic Cassidy fits into everything, and how phase two of FNAF is not a story of family drama born anew, it's a story 
about the end of the world. A huge thanks to all my patrons, including Alakazam, Ethan Furlano, Sherry and Mark, Starjoy, Big Dog Tie for the Win, The Boss Killer 94, Alberung Freud and Celicate, and Sir Hammy. 